And where where is this seller at? Like what what gets this deal done? And I'm all cash. I'm I'm unrepresented, Ezekiel. So I'd let you write the offer for me. Are you able to do that? Welcome to another episode of the Watch Me Wholesale Show. Here's how this works. I'm going to randomly select a market. Then I'm going to go into that market. I'm going to find an opportunity, a property for sale that we can call and make an offer on. Then I'm going to actually run the numbers, call, make the offer and see if we can actually get a deal done. Now, the point of this is so that you can see, you know, start to finish from, from scratch in a market that I've not even looked at yet to finding a lead, running numbers, getting to a, a, an offer price, making the offer. So the, the point is get to all the way to the offer stage because I want you to learn how to do this and get good at doing this because once you learn how to do this and get good at it, then, and you're consistent now, you're going to get deals every single month. Um, so in a minute here, we're going to jump to a picker wheel, which we have 10 random markets selected. We're going to actually randomly run that, spin the wheel and pick a market and then go from there. Now guys, all of this I'm going to be doing today is on PropWire. If you don't know, PropWire is the largest database of off-market data. We have, it also has on-market data and there's over 157 million records nationwide. And what's cool about PropWire is it's absolutely free to search, download, and do research on as many records as you want. No subscription, totally free. So, all right, if you're ready, let's jump over to the screen and let's pick a market. Okay, Fort Worth, Texas, let's go find a deal. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to joinpropwire.com and I'm gonna go ahead and put in Fort Worth, Texas. And then under the lead, I'm gonna put MLS active and I'm gonna choose single family homes for now. And I found a whole bunch of properties here and I'm gonna go by, I'm gonna go ahead and sort this by list price and I'm gonna start with the lowest priced up to the highest so I can see kind of what's at the bottom here. And you can see here it's got, these must be rentals. It's got some stuff listed for a couple thousand dollars in Fort Worth. Uh, let's see, what's this one? Oh, that one looks pretty rough. If I put my mouse over the, the record on the right, it kind of shows me a picture and where it's at on the map, or I can also do it on this side where I, I put my mouse over properties on the map and it kind of tells me. So I can kind of look at where I want to be within Fort Worth. But um, what I want to do here is I want to go try to identify something in Fort Worth here that'd be worth looking at. Like, let's just take this one, for example, on Waddle Street. So if I click on this, oh, before I click on this, on Waddle Street, this is telling me that it's for sale. It's an empty nester, meaning they've owned the property for a while and it's free and clear. So that gives me some information right there looking at the record. If I click on this, there's the property. It looks like a little three bedroom. I mean, it's, I don't know how it's three bedroom. It's called a 576 square feet. This thing is tiny. And in the writing, it says investor alert, Fort Worth fixer upper, potential, originally three bedroom. Now it's a two bed with expanded bathroom and walk-in closet. And then it's had some stuff done. Okay, schedule is showing today. So I'm going to go over here to owner. I'd like to click on the owner tab and it tells me if they own any other properties. So it's it's not. This is a private seller. And I can look at my comps right now. I'm going to go to history and it just doesn't give me any history on this one. They've owned it, I think, forever. And they've only been listed here for literally a couple days. There's the agent information or the who the agent is. We'll look that up in a second. But they're at 129. Now, is that a good deal? Who knows? We'll find out in a second. If I go to my comp feature here real quick, what I'll do is I'm going to say, okay, well, there's where we're at. You know, I'm, I might just want to stick within this really small area since it's a condensed kind of a high population. So I'm going to go ahead and draw and I'm probably going to stick to these main crossroads, you know, probably like something like this, maybe come down here, uh, you know, probably something like this. Okay, so I'll just stick within those major roads. And then I'm going to say I only want to look at two beds, try to get rid of maybe the big stuff. And there's a lot of homes that are small like that. Like here's another one. Let's see what else we've got. So definitely want to stay under 
a certain square footage. So let's maybe pick just small stuff. So I put 30%. That's keeping us like around that five, seven, 800 square feet. That got rid of all the big stuff. And you can see here, I've got, you know, a good handful of comps here. So now what I want to do is I want to say, okay, well, you know, what's top of the market, bottom of the market. So here's one for 320 a foot. So I like to look at price per square foot. That gives me kind of an idea, apples to apples. So that might be our outlier because it got 320 a foot, but then you got 244, 221, 259, 277. Now the low end is 79 bucks a foot. So that, that tiny little house got only 79 and then you got 194. So let's go ahead and pick these high ones. So I'd probably pick all these right here. So 277 a foot, 259 a foot, 221, 244, and 320. Now that gives me about a 150 uh, comp based value. So what it's doing is it's taking just the comps I selected and it's saying, okay, well, what's the average price per square foot? And then let's multiply that average by our square footage of 500 and whatever, 576, to give us a 150 value based on the high comps. Now, Comps are subjective based on what you're what you're trying to accomplish, your objective. So what I'm trying to find out here is, okay, well, what are the highest priced homes that have sold in the last year in this little pocket? Now I could change this down to six months if I wanted. And it only gives me two now. So if I pick these two comps, it puts me a little lower at 133. Okay, so maybe I want to go a little bit lower because I don't have that many good comps now that are within the past six months. That's probably a smarter idea really don't want to be going past six months. But again, I only want to spend a minute here. I don't want to look at properties. I don't want to go start doing a lot of research. I've got to get through this pretty quick. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I got kind of a ballpark idea of 133, 134. And now what I want to do is I want to go back and see if I can get a hold of this agent and call and see what's going on. And you can see here, I've got a couple different numbers. So this Ezekiel Moreno Perez, I got a phone, an office, and another phone. That's probably the broker's number. I'm going to try the phone number of, and let's just see if they answer this. You have Ezekiel Moreno Perez. I am not available at the Okay, so didn't answer the phone. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna send him a message. And the typical response that I'll send is, I'll just, I have this like saved. So I'm gonna go back and now I'm gonna send him a message that says, hi, Ezekiel. I'm an investor interested in making an all cash offer on your listing on, on Waddle Street. Can I call you? Okay. And it went through and it's an iPhone because it's in blue. So I know the text went through. I know we got it just now. And I, I again, I said, hi, I'm an investor interested in making an all cash offer on your listing on Waddle Street. And here he's calling. So see how that works? Yes. Hello. This is Jerry. Hey, Jerry. This is Ezekiel. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing, man? Doing well. Doing well. Can't complain. Good. Good. I was calling about your property for sale there on Waddle. What can you tell me about it? Okay, I'll tell you if that it is occupied currently. Um, roof is good. Uh, they just replaced the windows. Um, HVAC, no HVAC, just window units. Uh, foundation, a little, just a little minor wobble. I mean, you think it's like a light, a little foundation fix here and there. Um, uh, they did their own remodeling inside. So it, it was original 3 1, but they, extend, they expanded some some rooms like the closets uh, and their bedroom. And then one bedroom, they completed like it was an addition. So it, it's saying 530 was like the measurement was 580 something, but it's really around, I think it's close to 900 square feet because of that add on. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, it's yeah. 900 square feet. Correct. So it's a little bit bigger. Um, when you walk it, because it's just uh, that extra storage room they, or the room that they wanted to remodel, they didn't complete it. Um, as well as uh, okay. the back shed, and and yeah, that's that's basically it. Really, cosmetics only. If you know, basically at the end at the end of it all, because it's all gonna have to match, right? So that's 
that's really much the gist of it. What do you think it'll sell for fixed up if it's 900? And, and when you say 900, is it like wacky 900 where they did a bunch of additions and it doesn't flow well? Or, you know, how's it flow, the floor plan? If it flows naturally to a 2-2. Two, two, as a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. Flows naturally as a 2-2. Two, two. Okay. Um, you, can squeeze a, you can squeeze a 3 in there. Uh-huh. But then uh, there would be, with, you know, just tight rooms. But it would flow naturally like a 2-2, two, two, and it, it would sell. Honestly, I think it would sell for for up in the, two, in the 200s, two, 200 plus. Okay. So you think it'll get 200 as a 2-2? Two, two. Two hundred, I like can say two ten, three. Uh, if you make it a three two, it definitely sells for over, like just just like the other other ones that are selling for two nineteen, two fifteen. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm looking at um, here. Let me take a look real quick. Because for me, it's all about you know, can I make sense out of the mar of the neighborhood? You know what's going on. So if I stick to just that little pocket there, that Samsung Park area there where, where Waddle is, you know, I'm seeing some stuff that's like this one's 1100, a 31, it got 227. Right. Um, this one's 800, it got, no, that's not a good one. Um, so I, I like to look at price per square foot. So let me just look at that. So 192, 168, that one got, 204. So it feels like it's averaging around maybe 200 bucks a foot over there. Does that sound about right? So that, yeah, that puts you like right there at that 200 maybe as a as a back end number. So if it can get 200, what's that? And that's being conservative, you know? Yeah. So if it can get 200, what do you think it'll take to finish the rehab or to rehab it? As far as cost, rehab cost. Yeah, yeah. Like, what do you think would be a budget for rehab? Honestly, I think 50. 50 would do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so... And where where is this seller at? Like, what, what gets this deal done? I mean, I... Well, it's... Where is it? It's honestly, a... It. And, uh, and you, you, you let me know what, what's, what's, your, what's your offer. Yeah, I mean, I'm all cash. I'm I'm unrepresented, Ezekiel, so I'd let you write the offer for me. Are you able to do that? Yeah, of course. Okay. You can get the buyer side? Yes, of course. Okay. We'll get, we'll get, the, whole, we'll get the whole transaction. Yep. Um, but we just, you know, what would be from your, you know, verbal offer? What would, what yeah, I like to do a verbal, and then if they're – you know, once we get to a number, then we can put it in writing. Are you okay with that? That's fine. But where do I need to be here? I'm just trying to run my numbers. Um, where are they at? 129? 120, that's, that's exactly right. 129, that's that's if, uh, we said you're all cash, correct? Yeah, yeah. You haven't been listed long. Have you gotten any interest yet? On it, honestly, um, if, you're, if you're all cash, and we can make this, and you can make this close easily, faster. We can mm. do this off market. That's better for me, right? We do off market, and then we get we get do we settle this at one nineteen. Well, I mean, you're at one twenty nine. Correct, correct. Well, that's on the MLS to help the conventionals to help. Uh, for yeah, who, you know, they have to go to their special lending. But with you, since you're all cash, honestly, uh, we would have we have this thing listed on. Investor lift for one nineteen for the all cash, so there's there's some there's, there's more benefits for coming all cash. Of course, you know we'll get the deal done. It'll be a two week lease back, and then um, you know wait for her to get get her funds. She get get her next property to get out of there, and then that's it. That's a done deal. So you have this currently on investor lift. Correct. At one night at what at what number? One nineteen. Yeah. So when I run my numbers, I need to be closer to like a hundred. Cause if I'm, if I'm selling for 200, uh, let me run my math again. Yeah. I need to be all in at 150, spending 50. Yeah. I need to be closer down to like a hundred. 
So uh, yeah, just not there's not a lot of room at, for her situation. Uh huh. For what she's she's learning to go for for us, right? Um, lot, lots of depth that she's in with the property, so you, she's needing it at that price to be able you, to get out of that situation that she's in. But are you trying? Are you trying to? Are you wholesaling it or are you the listing on it? We're doing. We're doing. We're doing an ovation. Oh, okay. So you're doing an ovation on this. Got right. it. Um, yeah, gotcha. So that's why you're at your number now. But really what you're looking for is a retail buyer then, not another investor like me. Because I'm, I'm down there. I'm down there yeah. where you need to be, right? So so I'm, I might not be the right buyer for you. It might, might not, honestly. Uh, if, if you want it at 100, I mean, if you could, if you can make sense for, you know, both parties, right? Everybody wins. Everyone goes and uh, on to the next day. This is what we do, right? We, we get property soft market uh, on a day-to-day basis. So we could basically continue to, you know, if this is what you do on how many rental properties or how many flips have you done recently? Um, well, I do it all over. So we, we flip, we keep, we wholesale sometimes. We do novations too. I I'm, I'm kind of do some of the same things you're doing. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it, like, like honestly, and it like, has to make sense for you in as well. And I get that. But um, if you want to, you know, go ahead and, and just tackle this project, I think it, it'll definitely benefit you mm-hmm. to, to where, I mean, we can make a sense at 110. I could talk to my CEO, let him know, and then cash an offer. And then two weeks lease back, uh, let you know the buyer does pay all closing costs, uh-huh. all the title fees. Yeah. Um, and then that's it. You actually just to wait two weeks and, and then the property will be yours to, to take over. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me, uh, let me see if I can pencil this. I mean, I'm comping it at 200. So let me see if I can see, find any better comps and, uh, I'll check, I'll check into this a little bit more and then can I call you back? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Uh, rental, rental comps are solid as well. You noticed there's, yeah. uh, there's ones that are 17 a, a month. And then three one raggedy, you know, basic condition, you know, yeah. not not fully updated, and uh, that's why right. even as a rental, it's definitely gonna, it's definitely gonna cash flow. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm, go ahead. Run your numbers. Take take a look at it. And give me a call back if you want to submit an offer, and then we can go from there. Okay. Sounds good, Ezekiel. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> you're gonna run into this too, basically a wholesaler. So I then I. I started to draw the conclusion. Uh, he said a couple of things there like, oh, she can't this, she can't that. Um, and then I started to realize, okay, wait a minute, this might be a wholesaler. So he's doing a novation. Guys, if you don't know what a novation is, um, I'm doing quite a bit of these as well. You get an off-market property, you get the seller to agree to let you market the property, you market it like he's doing. But really he's looking for a retail buyer, someone that's gonna come in here and pay 120, 130. He's got room though. He came all the way down to 110 cash. My guess is he's probably got it for 90, 95, maybe 100, and he would take a quick um, you know, 10K assignment. He also mentioned investor lift. Now, I don't think I would say something like that if I were talking to somebody who I thought was a investor. I don't think I would say that because it diminishes the value of it being on the MLS if it's also on investor lift because if it's not selling on investor lift at 119, I don't want to be paying anywhere near there because what, what, what I would do is buy it and put it on investor lift or, you know, resell or whatever. Uh, so, but maybe everybody's missing something. He's got it marketed really poorly. He's marketing this as 500 square feet, which means it's going to pass a lot of eyeballs. People aren't going to see this because if you're thinking 500 square feet and it's really 900, then you're going to pass right over it because you're thinking, ah, oh, there's no way this thing's worth more than 130 like we originally thought. So, you know, maybe I'll take a closer look at this. If I do, I'll circle back around and make an offer. Um, but I would now spend a little bit more time. I would probably try to get my head around what's going on in that neighborhood, what's going on at that price point. What really does it take to get this thing brought around? Could I get it and remarket it and sell it better than he's doing? Maybe, maybe not. So I got a little bit of digging in to do on this one, but more than anything, I wanted you to see the process of randomly picking a market, finding a lead, being able to get to some sort of a value, running some numbers and making an offer. And again, what I did on my numbers, just so you guys know, is I took 200 as an ARV, 200,000. I did 75% of that. That's what flippers typically make. I try to get 
I, I mean, be all in. I try to be all in at 70. A lot of flippers are all in at 75. That would bring me down to 150. Then I would subtract out 50 in rehab. That put me at 100. So that's kind of where I got to that number. Now, I still would want to make an assignment fee. So I need, I need to be even lower than 100. But oftentimes I'll start there and I'll just see what kind of response I get and then go from there. Okay. But it's more about the activity of calling and making offers that I want you to see and learn from. So guys, uh, and I did this all on PropWire, totally free. You just go to joinpropwire.com. You can search and download and comp and do research absolutely free. So be sure to check that out as well. And I'll see you on the next video.